let's get back. Let's get back to the main action here. It is the West Coast Sevens, the premier showcase of college rugby sevens in the United States. And this is one we've been waiting for for the whole day. University of San Diego, the home team versus Cal. Now, Cal have scored up to 60 points one game. They scored over 50 another. But USD have showed that these guys are battlers and they're ballers. Is there any chance of this USD team clipping Cal here in this game? I think they've got to be what we just saw from Cathedral Catholic in that high school game just earlier, clinical. Got to make sure that they put their chances to bed. And these two teams, really good rugby programs. Jeremy, you're back with us. I know you've been keeping an eye. You said Cal were going to go all the way in this West Coast Sevens. You still got that? Yeah, I still have them. I, I'm really excited for this matchup, though, because I think USD will cause Cal some problems. Yeah, I think their work at the breakdown is really impressive. I think their defensive shape is really good. But I think Cal just has the athletes. But this will be a great matchup. And already you can hear a little bit more hype about this game, the sound from the bench. And it's Cal who get things overway in the penalty, which USD were heavily protesting. But they've got it to the big man on the edge, and they get in for the first try of the game. Yeah, I mean, Cal's started with what they've been doing all day. Really, really impressive turnover at the breakdown and put it on the edge. And that's that's again, you can see one of the one of the signatures of USD trying to compete in that breakdown, whether it be whether it be on the edge or the middle of the pitch. And I think that's just where they've got pinged, and Cal have gone the distance off that penalty. Let's it's, restart this game again. Yeah. It's such a difference. Sorry, I was just going to say, when you do, it, like in sevens, the breakdown is so competitive because it's literally one-on-one. -on -one. And talking of one-on-one, -on -one, just getting the better in the end. Fantastic work by Mac. Fell for the offload. As oh. USD just tap this back on their side. Doesn't go 10, so Cal leave it and USD pop it back. And it's Nick Thomasine who regathers the ball in the middle of the pitch. You can even see that Cal have actually even rested a few of their players for the earlier games. We have MVP of the previous tournament, Solomon Williams, previously of the Carlsbad Thunder, who's making his first appearance of the day. Looks like he's wearing a little bit of a face, face guard. Maybe he picked up a knock last tournament, so they've been resting him, but... As we say that and move on, USD have won themselves a penalty. Let's see what Nick Thomasine does. He decides to play it quick. That's a strong carry in midfield, and that's the first time we've seen maybe a team front up to Cal, but that's a lovely choke-style tackle to slow it down. But it doesn't look like the tackler had rolled away quick enough for the poke to happen, and Nick Thomasine again decides to take it quick. Ref's gonna stop things, it's a high shot, it's not offside and it's not rolling away. I tell you what, you can just feel the intensity in this game, not only here on the sideline from both benches, but I think as well, Jeremy, just the tempo that's coming in, the physicality, it's, it seems very professional. Yeah, I mean, they've started very high tempo, both sides. Uh, USD will be happy, actually. They've had some decent possession in the last minute. Thomasine here is causing some problems out wide. And uh, it's definitely a, a, well, there we go. That's number 12, Josh Butler. Comes in from the switch on the outside. You can see Thomasine calling for it. And when he goes in for the carry, he goes in with purpose and aggression. And maybe that's what you need against Cal. Every time you go for the carry, you need to be aggressive. 100%. We talked about how Cal have been physically dominant in this tournament so far. And they're now getting up against a side like USD who are taking the fight to them. And in the end, it was just a slip tackle on the edge just a slip tackle everything was good about the ta a cow defense together sliding together coming up and then it was just that one missed tackle josh butler powering through and that's seven points so in the end i believe it was a conversion just went over as well just watch it thomasine trying to be the threat ask him to come on the cut and it's just this one missed tackle just gets his head the wrong side yeah just gets a head the wrong side doesn't get the wrap doesn't get that power through the tackle and in the end the power came from josh butler great score I think that's the first time today that Cal's fallen off a tackle. So USD is definitely challenging them in a few areas. So look forward to the next few minutes and see how Cal responds now to a bit of adversity. They haven't had adversity yet today. Restart goes high and restart goes in the middle. And it's Solomon Williams who has a little bit of a fumble, but it is taken. USD counter rook, that is that seems to be their defensive style point, and that's Kate Caulfield who comes away with it, gets an all float away again. What a strong tackle coming in from Cal. This is the most physical game that we've seen so far. There is about that's 
half the players in the pitch in that rook there and Solomon Williams picks it up and gets an offload away Willie put a big one over the top he decides to find one more man they're back tracking Thomasine is tracking with them can he get a try saver here it's very good play ups with a little chip through good counter attack not a bad option to put it on the foot oh, he was I, looking for space but what do you reckon should he have held on I don't one? know Ian it's now we can start being a little bit critical everything was excellent up until that play but didn't need the kick through if anything just hold on to the ball you had USD completely on the back foot any kind of recycling and I think USD would have been put to bed so just kicking the ball out but this is a line out in a tricky situation for the Toreros yeah let's see with it with what is a pretty well prepped team what can they do from the line out in their own 22 and that's just an overthrow I think Caulfield went up in the middle uh, to try get it and it's just over the head that's really taking this thing out of, out of USD now. It is 12 points to five. Yeah, that, that's a tough one. USD probably fancied their chances of clearing their lines a little bit. But as you said, an overthrow and then, you know, all credit to Cal, they pounced on it. Going back to what Will said, I, I think the kick was the wrong choice. You know, it's easy in hindsight, but keep the ball in hand. That's how they're going to win this game. For sure. And although the kick being the wrong choice, it's gone out into touch and... You can call overthrow, but look at the pressure that the Cal defensive pod have put on that line-out and they put on every single line-out they see so far. The lads are set, ready to go. They're tracking who's jumping and they're putting a man up every single time. They're really putting pressure on opposition line-outs. And they take another restart, so business as usual. Yeah, that's set pieces there and Cal are going to have a penalty. Let's see. They're actually going to tap it and move it to the middle of the pitch. They look to be finding Solomon Williams every time to see what he can do. Ball goes one or two more passes as they find themselves in the 15-meter channel. And our big man, number 22, Oliver Teague, is stepping off his left. But USD again challenge that breakdown and they come away with the reward this time. But they're still right out from their own goal line. And Kate Caulfield carries. And it looks like it's awarding for not releasing the ball. That's a, that's a tough decision. I would say not rolling away from the tackler, but in the end, they've gone tap and gone and trying to get into this corner. Cow, yes, they do. Just like that. Turnover into turnover, and Cow bring their third try into the game. This has been decided on really little moments here. I'll be excited to see this replay. I know Kate Caulfield tried to have a carry on front of his own sticks, and I think he wasn't held in the tackle, so he probably felt he deserved a little bit of a roll. And then after that, we had a Cal player off his feet, we had a USD player trying to count the rug, and we had one poacher. So a lot going on for the ref there at that point. There was a lot going on. And as I keep saying with sevens, those breakdowns are so exposed. You really are going one on one against each other and the referee can see everything. So there we have it at the half, Cow leading 17 points to five. It is a fast and ferocious game here between USD and Cal Berkeley. Got to say, this has been the most intense game we've seen today. Yeah, this is fantastic. And this is what we've been saying at the start of the day, that a lot of these matchups are made against the two of the top seeded teams later in the day. So anyone that's stuck with us through the day, where it's a pleasure to have you out here at the West Coast Sevens, it's a battle. It's a battle here now. And although Cal are two tries ahead, USD are still in it. Oh, 100% they're in it, and, and I'm sure Charlie will be letting him know there were a couple of moments in that half that were the difference, an overthrow at the line out, a couple of turnovers, and, and they're right in the mix. So I'm sure they'll come back strong. And uh, Cal, again, the one thing you see with Cal is when they get an opportunity, they take it. And their structure and their shape is just, you know, what keeps them in game. So, uh, again, it, it's phenomenal watching this. But I tell you, I, I'm still excited about the commentary you guys did on the high school final. I think the high school rugby we've seen uh, this weekend has been incredible. So this is, this is comparable, but, boy, credit to the high schoolers. Yeah, it's fantastic to see a lot of those lads who would have played for similar high schools and high school clubs moving on to the college uh, arena one of them being Solomon Williams who played for the Carlsbad Thunder would have gone to the National High School Championship and now he's playing with Cal you mentioned earlier Cade Christ who also goes to Cal he's a hooker he's not playing sevens today but these guys are playing in those in those call in those high school games and then moving up to play in college and that pathway system is what we've been talking about today and equally I was speaking earlier, right at the beginning of the broadcast, when speaking to someone like Nick Boyer. He, of course, was part of Cal, and he actually played in that Battle of the Bay. This is what this tournament was back in the uh, the 2010s. 
and you can just see you know the fact that he's gone on and played in major league rugby usa eagle as well so it's great to see the pathway of players from the high school to the college college into the professional game as well and I've got to say, one thing that I'm really impressed when I look across to this Cal side is they look physically strong. They look like they've been in the gym, these young guys. And equally as well, this USD, um, USD team. These are proper rugby players out there. Really intense, they do really good showing. Strong and it's, but it is probably the first time that we've seen a team try to front up to them physically, which we said, if, if you're going to beat this team, you have to sort your set piece out, you have to match them physically and maybe you have to have a little bit, be able to deal with a little bit of chaos as well, which USD will try to do now. It didn't go 10, but they'll try to argue that it was a, a tap from a Cal player, but Nick Thomasine is going to restart proceedings right away. Yeah, it looks like they are trying to stay away from set piece and just make it a little bit more of a chaotic game. Got a big number four there, that's Don Martinez with the carry. Thomasine with the pass. And we've got Caulfield here now. He puts the head down a little bit and tries to get the flick over the top. Little loose, unfortunately. But again, some nice phases by USD. And, and you've said it a couple of times, their physicality is really testing Cal. It really is. And they've got to continue both sides of the ball. They've got to have big, strong carries. They've got to uh, front up on defense. But I really like the way USD is approaching this game. They're not intimidated by any stretch. No, the, the physicality in the breakdown is... Uh, is pretty fierce on both sides, but I've got to say, just in terms of technical aspects, the way how there's a tackler and then straight away they're competing, straight away someone's low on the ball, and whether they win it or not, it's slowing the ball down for USD. So really good work from Cal as USD try and put their own pressure on the breakdown as they get the ball away. Yeah, it looks like they have come away with the ball here, and they're in the Cal half. It's 19 points to five. Now is the time to get some points on the board. They put one over the top to number one, Jackson Short. He's going to put on a little bit of footwork, and he does well, bringing play up to the Cal 22. But look at that counter rook effort from Cal. It just makes things a little bit messier. It gives Thomasine a little bit less time, but he's done well in freeing up. Oh, have we got an intercept? Fantastic work there. That's number two, Paulie Habib, who comes away with it and feeds the ball. Can the big man finish on the edge? He tries to free up a hand, and it looks like ref said it's gone backwards. Can we get a finish here? Ref says, yeah. Yes, well done, that's fantastic work. Incredible pursuit there, the USD, um, just impressive. The commitment to, to every contact, supporting the ball carrier and getting, getting an edge on Cal, that says a lot about them. And if there's any bit of commitment that you can really pinpoint there, there was a, uh, there was a pass that seemed to float for an eternity in the air with the Cal guy coming in for the intercept and Paulie Habib said, no, really put the body on the line to snatch that out and ended up being the one to set up the try. Really good play. We're just seeing it come back on screen. Honestly, it was, and the ball is in the air there. I think that's it. Cow all over that, but just holds his feet and holds his strength there, Paul Habib. In the end, a bit lucky. Get the ball going backwards. And I believe that's Michael Lewis, the 13, wearing the 13 jersey for USD, gets a try. So five points on the board, bringing this game to 19-10. Still plenty of time in the second half. Yeah, Lewis is a really nice player. I think he, I think he's a junior. I'm not sure, but he's been with them for a while. He's usually their fly half. Oh, that's going to be a card. Oh, that was hitting that guy in the air. I don't know if it's yellow or red, but let's see. That's Paulie Habib there. Just, I oh know it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that is. That's Jackson Short there, number one, who just a little bit of enthusiasm for that restart. Um, USD will be down to six men for for two minutes. Can they keep them out? Great one-on-one -on -one challenge. Are they going to keep on contesting the rooks or are going to try keep keep six six men on their feet as they defend Cal here? Got to try and keep six men on your feet, particularly when you've got so many threats out wide like this man. I think that speaker who's just out there. They are still trying to go for the turnover, but what happens then? You get another person that breakdown. They're now got a four on two. Polly Habib and haunting on the outside there as they do the cutting off the wing and it looks like he's given a pen for a high shot as Solomon Williams tries to start things quick. Might take this on his own. Good shot tackle. Goes for the poach but not really on the ball and with the dive over the top he's probably going to award that again. So Cal five metres out here looking to put one on the board. 
and he's taken ownership himself and he's managed to get the ball down. That's good bravery. Yeah, very scrappy. I mean, up, up a man, I'd have thought Cal would have moved the ball a little bit more, maybe tried the left edge, but they decided to pound through the middle and came away with the five pointer. So credit to them. Looks like Michael Lewis is down on the sideline. So hopefully he's not too seriously hurt. That brings us to 24 points to 10 now. It's those little swing moments in the game, Will, where the game's within one score that you can see we have a restart, a team's gotten a yellow, and then they're down, they're down a try. So that just little moment where you've you've let the heat get to the head a little bit, and um, that's that's caused a little bit of a swing in the game. Yeah, momentum swings are everything in rugby, whether it's 15s or sevens, particularly in sevens when there is so little time on the field in comparison, and when you got a man in the bin, it's even harder. Really good composure in the end there from Cal. They didn't sort of rush things or do anything too spectacular, just kept hold of the ball. As now USD, they're going to have to try and attack with six men against a very, very good defensive line that Cal have. Curry with some good enthusiasm That's a penalty again, which they have. Aside, but no call, so. Give an advantage there for. I think just a knock on and he's Nick, indicated no that back on. we are back to full strength here for, for USD. They've got seven on the pitch there again. A minute and 15 seconds remaining, 24 points to 10. Can they get a double? You've got to think USD now have got to pull something out from this attack. They need two, two scores, converted scores to level things up. Nice but stepping by Thomas from Thomasine. And they have a little bit of space here on the edge. He opts to carry. Cal, the Cal defender looked to be off his feet and Thomasine's gonna go quick again. He's got many bodies on front of him. That means there must be space somewhere and USD are gonna try to find it now. Just a little tap off the hand. That one's gone forward. It's a shame, but you can see in the desperation for USD, when you get desperate, you start just honeypotting around the ball. You, everyone's very much drifting towards wanting to get towards the ball. And in the end, there was no width from the attack. They're back to seven men. In terms of the punch forward, Thomasine's been really electric. But this, you can tell USD are so desperate, but then they kind of lost their shape. So in the end, people not on the same wavelength. Cal here looking to close out the game. They're 14 points ahead, holding on to possession at this stage will do, but they're not satisfied with that. They want another one. And they are in just on the right-hand side. Well, even though it's going to be a Cal victory, I will say that USD showed a lot of character and showed a lot of opportunity of what they can do tomorrow morning. Um, you know, whether I'm UCLA or, or Grand Canyon, I wouldn't fancy my chances facing this USD side. I think they're very impressive. Last conversion to come. And although this will be a win for Cal, they've really had to graft through it. And just like we said earlier, we can see a few tired bodies out there. Their ability to rotate through players is going to serve them well in this tournament. There's even a few new faces that we saw here in this game. We did say Solomon Williams is his first appearance of the day, and some of the lads on the bench, we've seen them score tries in previous games, so they really have depth of squad. Yeah, a really good program we keep talking about throughout this day. The strength and depth, particularly as they're very much, of course, seven's focus for this weekend, but also a bunch of these guys will make sure they'll be eyeing up the 15s jerseys as well for Cal Berkeley. So, yeah, really good, intense game of Rugby Sevens there. And as you mentioned, Jeremy, like this US, USD team has plenty of tenacity. Just in the end, Cal just showing a little bit more class. And you could say being a little bit more physical. Yeah, physicality, I think, told. I mean, the Cal level, we've talked about it all day, their level of athleticism is incredible. Their level of conditioning is incredible. And um, and it shows. And even when times get tough, they just revert to their natural, which is, I'm a good rugby player and I'm in great shape. And, and it pays off for them. So um, having said that, the next game is getting ready. And Will, your your jersey is, uh, is back on the pitch. So excited to see what UTEP can do representing Will Hooley. Oh, I look forward to it. Yeah, we're coming up next, SDSU against El Paso. And keep an eye out for those orange jerseys. They are beautiful. That is coming up next.
Well, welcome back to West Coast Sevens. Uh, congratulations to Cal. Really hard fought win over USD. We now have University of Texas El Paso coming out against San Diego State. At San Diego State, the kickoff didn't go 10 meters, so we have a free kick to UTEP from the middle. Let's see what they can do. Big strong carry up the middle, taking a few defenders in with him. See how the Aztecs respond and quick penalty. So UTEP has an opportunity here to move further down the field. They've had a tough day so far, UTEP, so it'll be nice to see them get a performance going here. Yeah, Jeremy, you mentioned El Paso, Texas. That's a great way to challenge. It's a great way to travel looking for a challenge, so fair play to these boys. And it's San Diego State 2 now. A lot of new players out there who are in for a little bit of a challenge themselves. This should be a very interesting game. Yeah, I, I think probably two evenly matched teams based on what we've seen so far today. Uh, I don't know if I could give a nod to either one of them. But like you said, some young guys getting some experience. Uh, it's been a long day already. I mean, we've got another well, another three matches after this one, I think. So there's going to be some tired and sore bodies out there. And they'll be looking forward to getting hard work in for the next 13 minutes and then probably getting a nice ice bath in. Of course, these are tiring seven days, not only physically, but you're trying to get yourself up for one game in the morning and then let yourself try to relax for a couple of hours and then get that mental state right back up again it's a hard thing to do it's mentally fatiguing Ab absolutely and i think the uh, the teams that manage the the game and then the time be between games it makes a huge difference so it's a fine fine balance um, in terms of what you do in the two hours off but these guys will all sleep well tonight um, for sure i know we will as well ian and uh, look forward to uh, getting after it again tomorrow but in the meantime um, we, we've got a close contest here and I'm excited to see again these young guys you know prove themselves a little bit in front of this crowd and on this beautiful day yeah of course we've, we were looking forward to some of the better matchups in the day and we did just see USD and Cal um, be a little bit tighter in the earlier games and the next one up there we have GCU versus UCLA again two teams which have really shown they can they can have some promising rugby so the latter stage of this tournament plus the knockouts tomorrow will be fantastic and there we see the will hooley clearance kick so let's see how the kick chase is it looks like utep actually has a bead on this one this could be exciting yeah lovely little not not even not even little not even uh not even in any way slight he just booted the ball and put it into that space in behind stsu opting not to have a fullback back there and that's that's great play from utep Absolutely sensational play. A little bit of soccer skills as well to dribble it on. And in the end, El Paso, a deserved try for them. We've talked about how brilliant it is for them to be here. They haven't had too much to cheer about, but that, you could tell on their bench, they were properly happy with that one. Great work from the number 10 in the end to just hack it along. And Ian, I feel like you've been wanting a try scored from a kick all day. You must be happy with that one. I've been dreaming about it. I've seen all that empty space back in the backfield, and the only thing I could do anymore is kick the ball. I can't step and can't run, so I've been wanting one of these boys just to hoop it into the space, and looks like El Paso are the ones to do it. And you they've added the conversion, too. Look just that. like you said there, really nice pickup as well, and he beats the chest just as he scores, and... Fantastic shot. Zero. Fantastic shot. Credit to the team. That's a fantastic uh, look as El Paso lead this 7 nothing. Lock on from San Diego State and El Paso will get themselves another possession just outside the San Diego State 22. So. Yeah, and Will, you just said something interesting there. You talked about the coverage. I mean, I don't think we've talked enough about it. The work that the TVX video crew are doing are phenomenal. I mean, we've got five, six, seven cameras here um, getting every angle, the big angle. We've got a drone flying. And these guys have been at it all day since about 6.30 this morning. So very impressive professional coverage. And then there's us. <laughs> We're trying to be. We're, yeah, yeah, fake it until you make it, Jeremy. That's what that's my impression of of how how we should broadcast. But I tell you, who is not faking it. Is also this game. It's very intense. Is now SDSU come away with it. Our big state boy down the far touch line. Nice. It's a great, it's a great tackle into touch and and really you're starting to hear some noise from the UTEP touch line. This is the result. This is the game that they want now. They've had some really challenging ones earlier in the day. They travelled a long way. They want to get a win here. They really do. You can just tell the sideline is 
very much behind. Been behind them all day, but as you say, Ian, they haven't necessarily had too much to cheer about, but this game, you can tell they're fired up. Two pods on the restart right beside each other. This is going to be a messy one. It is indeed, and it's a tap back for San Diego State. Manages to recover, and that rook is contested. But now we're into a little bit of space, and the big man opts to carry right up the guts in the middle, and we split the pitch here, and SDSU are going to go same way around the corner. Will they find a little bit of space on the left-hand side? Yes, they do, but the tap tackle, he's not held, so he's back up on his feet. And the counter rook. It's a messy one out there, but still in the possession of San Diego State. What incredible commitment by UTEP in the tackle, though. I thought that guy was in untouched, and someone chased him down. Beautiful commitment. And finally, San Diego State have got themselves in for a try. That's Omar Krichati, who got themselves over, and they've had to work for that one. They really have. As, our player, as you see our overhead shot of our players retreating slowly to the halfway line, we are going to have the conversion attempt. And that one's just away to the right. So just under a minute to go, have a kickoff here. One opportunity for one of these sides to put something in before halftime. So hopefully good kick chase here, get aerial and see what you can do with the ball. I have to say, boys, I'm really impressed by UTEP in this game, though. Just their commitment, you know, their skill obviously needs to improve and they're working hard at it, but their commitment to this game is phenomenal. Totally agree. Shown in abundance when you do tap tackles like that, the last ditch defense. That shows character. You really can't teach that. It's a great work from this El Paso side as now they come running away again with this number 10 who's been elusive. Can it go all the way? Can he do it? He puts the pause, he presses the pause button and pulls out. And we're just inside the San Diego State half with UTEP in possession. It is an absolute mess at the breakdown. Teams are both contesting. His bodies and there are tired the and they're tired bodies out there again. The fan comes on from big number six. A oh, great tackle on the sideline there, beautiful tackle. I think a lot of these players are waiting for that halftime whistle, and it's not going to come because it's actually a penalty to the Aztecs. Let's see what the Aztecs do here. Will they, will they play another possession or will they go in for halftime? They're going to play. We've got a UTEP player down, so we're going to take a little, little pause in proceedings, make sure he's okay. But we're off again, and it's a big carry from San Diego State. We go up the middle, and we go same way again, same way. They got the first half, and it's hacked it through. It's, it's Frank Lampard in the middle of the pitch, just hacked that one through. And it's our number 15 from UTEP to recover. He's done a good job. You have to allow him to get up, but our San Diego State players on him. And yes, of course, the referee has given that penalty. And maybe UTEP now will slow things down and take us into half time. They are seven to five ahead. Unfortunately, trying to get all over the ball there from the SDSU player, but you've got to remain on your feet. You know, some of these guys may not be so familiar with the rugby rules and whatever, haven't played too much rugby in their time, but there is one thing, they are absolutely throwing themselves at it. As I think finally, have we got a half-time whistle? We do from the referee in the middle. Well, that was an energetic first half. I'm sure that these uh, boys will need a little hydration and a bit of recovery time. It was very intense first half, very tight game. There we have it, El Paso 7, SDSU seconds, five. We'll be back for the second half shortly after this. We are back here for the second half, half of UT El Paso versus San Diego State 2. It is, of course, the West Coast 7s. We are coming into the business end of the day, the last pool game for these teams. It is seven points to five in a very, 
very intense game between these two sides and it is no different in the second half here it's a big number 11 with the thunders run down the left hand side but ut are attacking well and the noise from their touchline is incredible it's another brilliant last ditch defense though from el paso just when i thought number 11 sean taylor was racing himself away down this near touchline the effort to get back from el paso has just been brilliant as a man who's i think just down here going to receive a bit of treatment hope he's okay making me breathless just watching this it's incredible yeah we've seen some scrappy rocks in the first half and it looks like the second one is going to be no different Oof. well beaten in the first tackle and then here challenging at the breakdown just comes in is that is that judged to be a little uh, knock with the hand is that where we're going to end up with a san diego state scrum here uh, we'll see what the referee's decision is it looks like it looks like we do have a penalty so san diego state still are in possession in the utep half That's a big carry up to the 22. And there is a little bit of space on this left-hand side. We can see Austin Wang hanging out. Can he get his hands on the ball? It just goes over the top, but he's going to try to recover now with one or two UTEP players in front of him. He steps off the left again. That's three steps in a row. Can he go under the sticks? He's taking a little... Do they call that one these days Whoa. off the collar? I think they might. Advantage. And I think yes. that's not just that's an advantage. It. It's a penalty try and a yellow card, so... There you go. The pressure just mounted too much for El Paso. Yeah. Defending with their lives. He got a hand it to them. Thomas Morales uh, almost took his head off there, and so he's paying the price for two <laughs> minutes in, in the naughty chair and seven points down. Late call from the ref, but definitely the right call. I think Thomas Morales actually is probably excited for two minutes of breathing on the naughty boy chair. <laughs> You've got to hand it to this El Paso team. They, they've, they've completely thrown themselves into this game, haven't they? They really wanted to end the, end the day on a high. Oh, ab ab absolutely. It's, it's, again, you know, kudos to them for, for the commitment. And they're still in it. This, this is far from over, the way this has been back and forth. Yeah, you can see there just where the penalty took place. It was a step which straightened him up and just a grab over the shoulder ended up on the collar. And once that collar's pulled, it's going to be a yellow card. Once he's in range of a try, they're going to give a penalty try. Looks like a knock on from UTEP again. And it's going to be advantage here. And we're just going to scrum down to SCSU. A try here for San Diego State too would give them a little bit of breathing room. They're under pressure a lot in the first half, but now is an opportunity uh, for them to get a little bit of distance from this fight to UTEP side. Yeah, great attacking position. If I'm the San Diego State scrum half here, you know, I'm probably looking to go to the weak side. I think that seems to be our best opportunity. They've got an opportunity for a three on two or probably a two on one. So let's see what they run. Free kick, you can go. Does he, nope. Referee saying it's a free kick. I think we're all wondering what's going on at this point. It goes back to the scrum. Is it just a free kick? It is a free kick. So just tap and go. Get on with it. Here we go. SDSU. Swing again. Caused trouble with the last try, but this time nice he's tackle. tackled. And UTEP again yeah. contests that rook, but he's thrown off. Big man number 17 has been carrying hard all day. But UTEP do manage to win themselves a turnover, and with three minutes to go, they're going to look to go the length of the pitch here. Offload gets away, and a little step gets away too. They are causing San Diego to State to commit more tacklers. I'll tell you that, and with the way that San Diego State are kind of clumping in the pitch, there, there kind of is some space there. Let's see if they can get to it. Shrugs yeah. off one tackle, drops the body height as he goes through contact and gets the offload away. That's just a little bobble backwards. Ref says play on. And there are some tired bodies out there just as it goes to turn over to San Diego State. Number five, AJ Schwartz with the carry. Yeah, it looks a little bit like a wrestling match in parts on this game. But again, you can't... You, Wow, you can't, can't fault them for the physicality. Unfortunately, another offside against Utah. And another Utah player down. Yeah, big shoot from San Diego State out there indeed, but he's a judge to be offside. And San Diego State are going to move it on again. Wayne with the 
hard carry and he's not held so ref says play on and he manages to break another tackle and get himself under the post this has been there's been a little bit of carnage in the rooks there's been some balls flying everywhere but mostly there are some tired bodies out there i love the term carnage there i think that summarizes it perfectly i think that probably puts sdsu a little bit out of reach we've got about 90 seconds left with the kick to come and as you said very tired bodies i don't know if they can get up and down the pitch twice more to to tie this one up Conversion is good from San Diego State. And as these boys start to go back in their own half, there's a couple of the USA 7s players, a couple of the coaches out there trying to give some inspiration to these UTEP boys who have traveled so far. Say it's the last few minutes of rugby of the day. Get up for it. You've got a minute to go. Show them you've got the minerals. Show them you've got what, it's, what it takes to play rugby. Kick goes deep. We're back again in the UTEP 22. Good, Bondi. Get out, look up. Ten, San Diego State players. On the ground a little bit and off his feet. He's going to have to release. Oh, good Lovely step off. Fend. And can he go the whole way? Yes, he can. It's our number 10, Eli Guevara. Well, he finishes it nicely, doesn't he? He had the great try earlier from a he little chip has. kick through. He had a little opportunity to maybe do himself a favor, get pl closer to the to the posts, but we're still with 12 seconds to go. Yeah. He has a chance to convert this and go again. I'm wondering if that messaging is coming on. Yeah, hopefully they know to hurry the kick because they do have an opportunity for one more possession. We'll see how lenient the referee is here. That time is up on our clock, but the referee might have, have a different different number on his clock and We're yeah, still looks going. Like we do have time for the restart Gavera. there we go 19 14. Guevara very much being a talisman you said Jeremy brilliant solo effort with his boot hacking along in the first half but then just deciding I'm going to take this on myself tap and go away and just bang there's the stiff arm and he just backs his pace so there you have it can they produce something else like that El Paso five points adrift SDSU, what do they do? Have they it's got gone just to the middle and it is a knock-on, but that might be, the, not, might be the end of things as well. Is it the end of the game? That should be the end of the game. It is. So, UTEP just so, with a little chip to the middle of the pitch. Ryan Matias celebrating there. Big win for the Aztec second side. Congratulations. Also, congratulations to UTEP. Rounded out a good day. Rest up. They'll be back after it tomorrow morning. Great effort from both these teams. And just as these two teams, SDSU 2 and UTEP, are giving each other some high fives, next up on the pitch will be GCU versus UCLA. Welcome back to Chula Vista, the Olympic Training Center. Myself, Will Hooley, joined by Ian Dunnan and of course Jeremy O'Gnell as well in the booth we have GCU coming up against UCLA coming towards the back end of this first day in this West Coast Sevens here on the Rugby Network Ian back over to you we're looking forward to this one yeah you can even see by the setup of both teams that they're they're very well prepared for this for this tournament UCLA having two lifting pods on either side and they've managed to win the restart, which we see has, has caused trouble for a lot of teams today. And it looks like they're going to spread it wide. Max Griffiths, who scored a few worldies today already, can he get himself another? He really, really makes teams, really makes defenders guess, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, th this game's an interesting one. You know, we talked about them all day. You know, these are two of the top four. So it's almost like we had Cal USD as one sort of semi final, I guess. And now we've got another one for seeding for tomorrow. Griffiths again over the top. Steps off the left twice, manages to get inside two defenders. And UCLA again, but great counter rook from GCU. We're still in, we're still in the UCLA half. 
This is certainly a tense one as Dan Joyce has a carry himself and skips to the outside, puts the foot down, and he might be the one to get the scoring going for UCLA, and he does. They have multiple threats there. They've got Griffiths on the left, who every time they go there, they need to put two on him either side, and once they can get it back to the right-hand side, a little bit more space for Dan Joyce. Great play from UCLA. I think a bit of a mismatch on that outside. Joyce with far too much pace as they start well. But we know with GCU, then the last game they played, they didn't start well at all when they then came back with plenty of quality. So that's what UCLA wanted to do to begin this match. But ultimately, GCU wanted to bring themselves into it. They got a lot of pace and, and ultimately X factor across this pitch. So good start for UCLA, but ultimately this is going to be tight. Yeah, I think we're definitely in tight for a very tight match. GCU will be uh, disappointed with the match up there on, on the right-hand side. They'll have to make an adjustment to counter that guy. So see if they can retrieve this kickoff and play a little bit down UCLA's end again. Yeah, GCU defended well for a few phases. Unfortunately, it was a little bit of horsepower on the outside, which got them away. But great take on the restart from a single-man lift from GCU. These two are well, These two are well-prepped sides. And there, it looks like they're going to play from their own 22 again. It looks like it's gone forward. And again, if you look at the UCLA setup, they actually left no one home. I'm wondering, is that messaging going to come on for the GCU team? This is a sloppy, sloppy mistake right in the center of the field. Not a good area to defend from, a beautiful area to attack. As UCLA bounces to the right and then come back on this left. Uh, we've got the edge again. Yeah, Looks that's Blake Gallon there with the finish. Uh, did he get it down? Yes, he did. Just, just a nice, easy play. We've got um, Vincent Alue, who seems to be controlling proceedings, number two in the middle of the pitch, and he's, find, he's found the big man, Blake Gallon, on the left, and he scores a try again, stretching UCLA's lead. It's interesting. GCU looked so good the first two games, and they, they've come out very cold in this one. If they don't switch it on soon, I think this game could run away from them. So they, they need something they need now before halftime. Otherwise, I think they're in trouble. Shit, that's very true. They, they actually came out cold in the last game and then managed to really turn things around as we see Joshua Cox just missed the kick. Um, and it's back to Alue again with the restart. Great take from from GCU again. I wonder will they recognise that UCLA are leaving no one in the backfield as they carry up just to the five metre channel and bring some width to the pitch here. Ball goes to the middle. GCU looking to attack. The big man puts the head down, but he's matched by the leader of this UCLA team. And again, good win at the breakdown. Calls to swing it out from the touchline. This is a nervy one. Great catch on the curry from the straightened line and the loop and one over the top. And now we have a little bit of space. But now the referee says, no, that one's gone forward. And again, GCU looking to play a lot of ball in their own 22. But UCLA are playing with seven up flat and leaving them with no space at all. I think ultimately as well, GCU trying to back themselves to hold the width. But if you're going to try and get it there, you're going to have to hold your depth. That one just getting caught man and ball, which meant they had to have pressure on the pass. The pass then goes forward, and UCLA have now another attack inside the GCU half. So GCU just putting themselves under pressure. Ball goes back, Blake Allen gathers. He's nice and calm about it. We get it to the edge. Let's see what Max Griffiths can do now. Can he shrug away one? Yes. He's going to get in for what is probably his third or fourth try of the day. You just can't give that lad too much space or he'll score. UCLA starting to stretch away a little bit now. Um, heads are starting to go down from, from GCU. It's been a long day, and on the third game of the day, when you've had a lot of sevens minutes, I tell you, it's easy to start hanging the head. What do you think, Will? No, it's, uh, I think Jeremy hit it right on the off. In terms of now, is it getting away from GCU, Jeremy? I mean, you said it earlier. It's a shame because I feel like they've performed so much better in this day as a whole, but like they just have had nothing. And maybe that's a credit to UCLA as we look back at this try again. They are just clinical in their attack and with the space, the Griffiths, Griffith's speed as well. I don't know, GCU yeah. struggling. Well, I, I had GCU actually probably s 
probably slightly favored uh, in this match. And uh, again, once again, I was wrong, not the first time today. But, um, you know, they're not out of it. Um, they're playmakers like Jackson Gray here on the right side, number 12. They need to get the ball in his hands in space, a couple of other guys to be able to counter what UCLA is doing. But UCLA's defensive shape and commitment is excellent. Yeah, you have to give a nod as well to Vincent Alue, who's taking the research and also controlling proceedings in defence from the middle of the pitch. He's been fantastic. And although it's guys like Joyce and Griffiths who are getting their names on the score sheet, this lad is leading so well. And again, he gives a clap to the group and he gets the ball right away. He's going to put the put into the scrum. It seems like a real leader out there. Yeah, another mistake, another handling error by uh, GCU. Puts them under pressure just inside of their 10 metre line. And I'm sure UCLA will be licking their lips, you know, right now, a few seconds before halftime. One more opportunity to put another five points on the board. Good solid scrum. Lead to some nice shape and attack here. Yeah, UCLA have a great calmness about them now, whereas we watched the start, their, their first game, there's actually a little bit of some frantic elements, but these boys can play, and the more they're relaxing into the tournament now, they're, they're starting to look, yeah, there we go, just the calmness of the pass, hold your feet nice and deep and get it to those danger men on the outside. That's Joyce being one of them who gets the pop away to Matt Griffiths, who again avoids the first tackler. And now that the GCU defense is a little bit clumped, there is some space here on the edge. Great patience from UCLA, moving the ball, and in the end, it's a great step off the left. Josh Cox, I've seen him play the 15s game at fullback, and he has a wonderful left footed step. So, just exposing a tired GCU defense at the end of this first half, but very good patient ball and hand work from UCLA. Very impressive. UCLA playing the best rugby they have all day, and GCU probably making the most mistakes they have all day. So, that results in a a big deficit at halftime. Just watch it back here now on the replay. Just moving it laterally, but they then just step off, bang, there's a left foot step from Cox. They just kept the ball alive though, went from edge to edge and then back to the other edge. It was a lazy defender in the middle, unfortunately for GCU, which Cox just sees, steps off his left and it's good night. He's under the sticks. Halftime here at the West Coast Sevens. It is UCLA 26, GCU 0. And we're back here for the second half. It is the West Coast Sevens. We've got UCLA versus GCU. 26 to zero, UCLA have really shown that they're a uh, competitive and complete outfit here. Is there anything that GCU uh, can do in the second half to maybe self even, even get themselves on the score sheet? Well, I, I absolutely think they'll be on the score sheet. Um, I think they're too good not to score. Um, as far as getting back into the game, I think it's probably a bridge too far, but Again, I've been proved wrong before, but they, they just need to score to buoy their confidence. And again, even if they don't win this game, to, to build themselves for whoever they play the next morning, which is going to be another tough match. Ball on the halfway line there. And if you look at the screen, we've got seven UCLA defenders all up. There is space in, between, in behind GCU opting not to kick. They're, they're back in their physicality. They're holding on to the ball. They're really playing an abrasive game. But UCLA are matching them. But there's just no room. GCU has no room to move. Like you said, seven in the front, uh, no room to move. Now we're doing a little kick, which is not a bad idea if it stays in. Unfortunately for them, it didn't. So right idea, just poor execution. I would say that's a win, though, for UCLA. I, may, I know, yeah, there's room at the back, but just the way how they have seven players on their feet making tackles as well kind of feels for GCU that they're really hoping that one of their players does something fantastic, breaks through the line, kind of relying on that effort. As for UCLA, that defensive line was looking so strong as now they have the ball in attack and the GCU are, are under pressure once again in defense. And it's our boy Max Griffiths who pops it up but doesn't go to hand this time at it. It will be an opportunity for GCU to have possession in the UCLA half. You can even see before there from UCLA, they opt for a little quick line out. They're doing well. Um, they really have both multiple options in attack and multiple options off their set piece as well on the restarts and the line outs. 
Well, it's also interesting if you see UCLA just bought Seabrook in off the bench, who's been a threat all day. You know, he's jumping in at the center spot, so he's going to cause some problems with, with ball in hand for sure. It'll pop around to the short side from Vincent Disney, but he pulls out again. He might get it back from, from Gray, which he lets that one go. and No, knock on. So our number 11 has a little fend on the outside. That's Lewis Case. Fair play to him. Really good right-hand fend, and he gets in on the score sheet. And GCU are back in business here. It's It may be, may be a tall ass to, to get themselves four tries, but they're going to give it a go. You mentioned Seabrook there, Jeremy, but ultimately I think he came on the field and just slipped off a tackle, <laughs> which then enabled to have the overlap out wide. That man doing the conversion, I've got to, I was always been impressed by number 10, Luke Neely, and he hasn't had his hands too much on the ball, the playmaker for GCU. He was starting to pull some strings there, but in the end it was just this missed tackle here that then brings in the defenders for UCLA that then gives the overlap in the end for GCU just to pick off once again, though, as you mentioned though, Ian, that's a wonderful fan from Lewis K. So GCU, that's better from them as they regain the ball back off this restart. And Will, I do want to clarify, I said Seabrook with ball in hand. I said nothing about <laughs> his defensive capabilities. <laughs> we get to the edge here, our try scorer again, Case with another one on one. Stabs it through this time. And it is not recovered. It's back in the hands of GCU, and they have an opportunity just outside the five meter line to go in again. Neely gets his hands on the ball, spreads it wide. Another one through the hands. That's Gray, and he goes over oh. the top. Can he keep it in? No, we can't. That is unlucky. If there's there's three minutes and 15 seconds to go, if there's any opportunity for these boys to get back in the game, that might have been it. And that, honestly, guys, it's just been... Well, I've seen a lot of that from GCU today, just in terms of their ability to move the ball really well, straighten up and pass. And it's just that last one at the end not going to hand. And maybe you could say that summed them up a little bit in this game. At times, they've really shown their ability, but just a lack of execution. Admittedly as well, UCLA have been definitely the better team. But this is definitely a GCU performance in the second half that we had seen earlier on this day. And Will, tonight when you're in your room doing the analysis of all the matches today, I'm sure you'll be looking at the passes, you know, on the edge that have spilled to the ground and give us a, some stats in the morning. I'm looking forward to hearing that. <laughs> I might have to count a few, but at the same time, I'll enjoy counting the amount of tries we've had on display as well today. So I'll, go, I'll, I'll have the negative with the positive as you see they come and attack. Here's your man Seabrook, fresh off the, off the bench. Good carry. Good carry, set them up, nice position. Can attack on the edge here. And although they are playing in their own 22 UCLA, there is a calmness about them, possibly because the game is, is already won, but still it, it seems that they've really relaxed into this tournament. They seem confident and maybe these are the ones to challenge Cal, who we've seen have scored up to 60 points a game earlier in the tournament. I think Jeremy did call it to be fair, Cal. Uh, Certainly the favourites, and I think as well what we have seen today, they have produced the most complete package. In particular, their physicality has actually really pulled them through. But UCLA have those individual threats. As now GCU just pumped through the line, and Neely has just nearly got himself to the line, but just caught in the end by UCLA. That's unlucky. That's a nice little starter play with the scrum half looping around uh, the back, but they decide to get the short pass. Um, lovely little play that just did not go to hand. Would have been a nice one for, for GCU to get over the line. That's obviously a little scripted move. Yeah, story of almost the last couple of minutes of GCU. They've had two, three really good opportunities to put a second score on the board and, you know, test UCLA a little bit and ball spillage. And now all of a sudden, less than a minute to go, I think it's, again, a bridge too far. So um, my prognostication, again, is going to go to UCLA. Big surprise. Yeah, they've done well. And they, although we only have 40 seconds to go, they're looking again to get one other score sheet. And it's Max Griffiths who gets a little pop back and we're holding on to the ball there. That's Dylan Mercer, or that is Jaden Seabrook who pops it back. And UCLA have another opportunity to, oh no, they don't. It looks like we're in from the side there and, and GCU are gonna have one more opportunity to get themselves on the score sheet. Yeah, with 10 seconds left, GCU again just want to build some momentum for tomorrow morning. Game's lost, but the tournament isn't. 
Certainly not, and seedings will matter as we get into a quarterfinal stage. They want to try, possibly avoid some of those big boys and put themselves in with a shot, shot of making, making a semi-final. Jackson Gray on the switch, and yes. a really good, strong carry. Luke Need, he gives the ball. They just haven't had enough carries like Jackson Gray's carry there to be able to, to take this game. That's so again, seven. Kenny plays on and Needy again gives it to Nigel Johnson who throws a dummy and has a carry and looks to get an offload away, but it looks like it's gone to ground in the tackle. And GCU can't get another one on the board, but a very well-deserved victory from UCLA, 26 to seven. Yeah, pretty comfortable in the end for UCLA. and. They would march through into tomorrow, being definitely a team to watch out for. As we mentioned, of course, Cal and USD definitely have come across as the top three teams from today. I'll be honest, these guys need to make sure they recover well because that could be key in what happens tomorrow. It's kind of as the day's gone on, you can tell there's a few tired bodies in the end. GCU, I think that might have just been a little bit of an impact, just a bit tired in that game. And in the end, it's UCLA who come away with a win, 26-7. to 7. Okay, welcome back to the West Coast Sevens here in Chula Vista, California, the Olympic Training Center. We've had an amazing day that seems to have gone on and on, but beautiful rugby across the board in the college and high school aspect. This is the last game of the day as SDSU 1s take on USD 2s. Jeremy Ognall comes in the booth with me for this last one. What are you made of the whole day, Jeremy? It's been a good one. Oh, it's been spectacular. From first to last, it's been amazing. So looking forward to seeing San Diego State against USD, crosstown rivals here. But yeah, fantastic day, as you said, Will. I mean, high school, college, um, just the organization. West Coast Sevens has run a, an amazing tournament. So looking forward to seeing what happens here. You know, even though it's their second side, I, I'd probably give a slight edge to USD over San Diego State. But again, I could be proved wrong. Here we go then, USD on the attack. They have shown a lot of ability, this second team, even against some of the big sizes. Now they pull away to this edge. What a run that is from De Rossa. The big man number five, Carmen De Rossa, just gets tackled out of bounds. And what a start from the USD. And you can hear the bench to the left of us as well getting excited. Could say this is a nice San Diego rivalry to finish on. Oh, for sure. Yeah, these teams probably don't care for each other very much. They play each other all the time. And, you know, San Diego State was always sort of the king of the hill for, for a long, long time. And the last, you know, I'd say four or five years, they've been knocked off the perch by USD. So no love lost. There you go, charging down the side under De Rossa as now SDSU managed to get hold of the ball from that line out. Wasn't exactly straightforward, but they get hold of it as the referee gives the penalty in SDSU's favour. The one thing we've really seen today, Jeremy, is when a side builds that tempo into the game, even from those penalties, those tap and goes, that's been where teams have looked dangerous on the attack. Oh, yes, particularly um, the, the classier teams for sure, but th they use it as an opportunity to launch. They, San Diego State this time decided not to go with the quick tap and put a touch, and let's see how effective their line-out can be. San Diego State. SDSU, of course, coached, run the program by Ryan Marius, former San Diego Legion, former teammate of mine, both the San Diego and USA, doing a great job coming into this program this year is now SDSU come away with the ball. Watch out for this man, number eight, Colin Albert. He's a big ball carrier in the middle of the field as they just keep hold to it on that far side. Yeah, they're doing a nice job of retaining the possession here, looking for some space in the middle, and it looks like they're exploiting that space a little bit right now. It was an offload for Ronan Green, and then Davis as well gets it away. Just keeping on to it. Is now busting through the middle, number six. Madatian. Moving it to our near side, is now step on the wheels, yes please. Aidan Fleming. Showing some pace in SDSU, score their first try of the game. Yeah, f nice finish by Fleming, but you know, just the consistency of the work to get Fleming the ball was what created it. So several phases and really impressive finish. So gets them some confidence, puts them on the board, and, and we'll see how USD responds. A few tired bodies, you can say, by 
Coming towards the end of this day, it has been a full day of Sevens Rugby. Jeremy, I know we've also been a full day at it as well. Ian Denham, of course, has been in the booth with us. The noodle bags man himself. Absolutely. He, he's, you know, really driven us well today. It's, it's been a great day. I actually feel for San Diego State because I think they were um, first out the gate this morning at 9 a.m. Oh, actually, no, that was their second side. But again, long day. I know they're local boys, so they get back home quickly. But long day for all these teams. We talked about the attendance here today as we're looking back at this try from Fleming as he coasts under the post. But I've actually had a really good crowd that's come throughout the day. I know people making their way back up north probably on the 805, but we are still got this last game of the day as USD finally have the ball in their hands. Trying to get it to De Rossa on this far side, the number five for USD, wearing their light blue on blue kit. Penalty there at the breakdown in USD's favor. The offside there by the Aztecs, so a chance to clear the lines a little bit, which they seem to be doing. USD just trying to find space, but it's all a bit frantic. Probably a little bit of a lack of depth, but now busting through the middle, finally. That's number eight, Brody O'Brien. Still going through the middle. Maybe that's a tactic they're looking into this game so far, as finally they get the ball out to De Rossa. So he has some speed and power as he tries to fend off the SDSU defender, keeps driving his legs and gets himself a penalty as well. Oh, that's a tough call, I feel. I thought he released him, but again, I'm not refereeing. I think it's a tough call. I'm not going to disagree with you on that, Jeremy. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned the crowd as well. It has been a great crowd. Really, really enjoyed them. One thing I did notice at the most... Uh, I guess the busiest part of the stadium was the beer garden, which is, isn't that unusual at rugby events? I think we'll be heading into there pretty soon after this. We deserve it. As these boys deserve a break as well, as we come towards the end of this first half, the USD still not on the board as they drive their way into the SDSU half, keeping hold of the ball. Getting out now, Connor uh, offside Karu, in the back offside. line. I was just actually about to say, San Diego State is doing a nice job of, of pressing in defense, but they were pressing illegally, and it looks like they pressed illegally again. So referees making sure they're back 10 this time, and USD will try and attack. Got to make sure you're back 10 meters up from the penalty. So when you tap and go and try and catch a defensive team again offside, that's what USD have done as they pull away to the far side, coming back on the switch. Now, great little dummy there from Caro as D get himself over. Yes, he can. Great try for USD and in front of their other team over there celebrating that one. Yeah, great, great carry, great finish, reached out, get it over the line. Like you said, in front of the USD tents as well. So there's a lot of noise coming from that place. But I, I think based on the first half, that's that's probably a fair reflection. You know, kick to come, USD are down 7-5, about 25 seconds left. And the kick is no good, but tight contest as we expected. Tight contest indeed, as we just see the replay there. The fool going one way, coming back the other and a bit of power to finish it off from number 10, Connor Carahu. The man from Texas getting over the line, number 10 there for the USD second. So we've got a tiny bit of play left of this first half. The referee just holds fire. We have a substitution for USD. Joining us here, the West Coast Sevens on the Rugby Network. USD twos against SDSU coming towards the end of this first half. Do SDSU have another attack in them? Yeah, the USD's made a couple of substitutions, probably get some fresh legs. They've actually brought Chase Basson onto the pitch again. Great physicality there by USD. And again at the breakdown, but Chase Basson actually came, high school kid from here, came out of Miracosta Junior College before he joined USD. Good, good rugby player, good young man, and so excited to see him back on the pitch and see if he can make an impact over the next six minutes. 100% and look at that counter ruck again coming through this time they get the ball back USD moving it to this near side the dummy and go not to be Chase Basson we just talked about him earlier but still he gets the penalty it will remain in USD's hands can they finish the half on top 
Yeah, the Aztecs are getting on the wrong side of the ref right now. They'll be frustrated by that. So it gives USD another attacking opportunity. Tap and go, moving it to the far side. Basong decides to go himself. Not a bad option as he's a strong ball carrier. Just a bit of patience, you feel, USD, as SDSU try and get it, and they do, holding on. There, number 12 for SDSU, Baden Davis. Spoke to him earlier with his English accent as well. He's actually only been in San Diego for about a few months, and he kicks that ball out to finish this first half. Jeremy, it's 7-5 to SDSU. Yeah, and probably probably a fair reflection of, of the half. I mean, it's you know it's virtually a tie, and you know both teams showed some talent. I think USD started to get into the game in the last two or three minutes, and probably were in the ascendancy. Uh, but some stern defence by the Aztecs, you know, held them out, and you know definitely all to play for now for sure. All to play for. It's the last half of this West West Country West Country West Coast Sevens here on the Rugby Network. We are getting through, it is 7-5. San Diego State 7, San Diego USD 2-5. Jeremy and I are only seven minutes away from the beer tent. Welcome back. The last game of this day one of the West Coast Sevens brought to you here on the Rugby Network at the Chula Vista Olympic Training Center in San Diego. Talking of San Diego, it's San Diego against San Diego. It's SDSU versus USD. I'm Will Hooley. I'm joined by the absolute legend I'm going to put you as of the West Coast Sevens in Jeremy Ognall. Obviously, we've had your men, Claremont, involved, but it's been an impressive day overall as we see these two San Diego sides go up against each other. Great day. I'm um, looking forward to a strong seven minute finish here. Best part of the day was just the conversation I had with you and Ian off mic talking about maybe getting a little dirty martini after that. So let's see, see what happens and then we can slug one down. Absolutely. Drink responsibly, of course. Of All right. course. SDSU come away with it. Been impressive, Colin Albert. I've already mentioned his carrying ability in the middle as now they sling it out to the width. As no, nope, they come back on the inside. Can they pick the USD defence off? Yes, they can. And here we go. Farius is going all the way. Will he get tracked down? He does. Oh, that, that's a high shot. I'm surprised there's potential there for a penalty try, but no, it's just a penalty and play on. And then they lose it. They do oh. lose it, but it comes back not 10 metres from the USD defence. SDSU will have a chance to go again. You are right, I did think there was maybe gonna be a penalty try. Well, a couple earlier in the day were, so just for consistency reasons, but maybe the ref didn't see it too egregious, so play on. Ronan Green that, that, does some work himself, offloads it nicely. Yeah. Christian Furrius gets himself over the line and SDSU deserved that try in the end, Jeremy. They take their lead into 12-5. Oh, beautifully worked try and have a try obviously at the end there but it we really started in their half with their ability to move the ball through the hands onto the left edge and some strong carries then some consecutive penalties you know kept usd pinned deep and the result is a try so uh, good work coming out of halftime by by san diego state so whatever ryan matthias said to them uh, i think it worked ryan matthias of course former san diego legion and usa rugby legend all his wisdom now within that SDSU college program. The conversion drifts just wide, so we're going to remain at 12-5. And here, Jeremy's that tackle that you thought might have been a penalty try in the end. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, you know, borderline. But again, I'm not in the middle with the whistle. So, you know, you've got to play the referee. But um, it, it didn't matter to the Aztecs. They kept the pressure on. Nice leap into the try zone. So good finish and still plenty of time for um, these teams to get their teeth into each other. High hanging kick goes up from SDSU. It doesn't go quite the 10 meters. So in sevens, that comes back for a free kick on the halfway mark. As SDSU try and inject some pace into the game. They do, moving it wide. That's Basson, we talked about him earlier, how he's a strong ball carrier. Get his hands, here's another one, Brody O'Brien comes through the middle. I would say that's not too much sevens play, but it could be effective as now they try and move the ball out to the width. A little loose on the ground there, but they're retaining possession. 
They are returning possession. They are going backwards, though, as well. This SDSU defense coming on top of oh, the USD. That's going to be a penalty. Yes, indeed. High tackle. Can they inject more pace? Catch this SDSU they have, defense. They have the edge here. Wonderful yep. hands. To the yep. edge they go. And the Toreros will get their try here in the second half. It's number eight, Brody O'Brien. And Jeremy, that was some good bit of patience. In the end, it came from that tap penalty. O'Brien gets over. Yeah, great carry by O'Brien. A great, great app actually pursuit by the Aztec there. Almost got him on his back and prevented him from grounding it. But he did ground it. The try's good. And, you know, now so we're back with, uh, you know, almost could be a tie game, depending on the kick. Kick to come. Number 10, Connor Karu from Texas here in San Diego. And that unfortunately is just wide. So we are going to still remain with SDSU in the lead. USD twos just two points off. As we can see this try again, just movement, quick ball. And in the end, it was just a pick off on the edge and a bit of pace from O'Brien. Yeah, a lot of space for O'Brien, but again, good strong carry. He gave up a little bit and almost got rolled onto his back, but the try is good. Now Fa Aztecs are clearing. Fast and furious, the Aztecs wanting to finish this day strongly. Aren't we all going to want to finish this day strongly as SDSU cut inside? Great stepping. That's from Farias, who scored the try earlier. Ball picked up. The referee decides that's another high tackle. So SDSU, Albert will tap and go. He doesn't carry, he passes. You know, we did, well, that's a nice tackle. We did talk about this earlier in, in the tournament that uh, USD, very impressive, but uh, they have to clean up the penalties. They, they're, you know, committing seven, eight penalties a game and, and it's going to hurt them again against better opposition. They've got to be cleaner. Talking of being clean, unfortunately, that wasn't from SDSU. Aiden Fleming just dropping that in the end. Maybe a few tired bodies. You wonder whether they might make a few substitutions. Substitution. I'm looking across the line here. Looking like some fresh men to come on to finish off this last game we've had on the West Coast Sevens. A fantastic day here at the Chula Vista Olympic Training Center. As SDSU just in the lead, 12-10 against USD twos. Must be probably foot up, free kick. So Aztecs are trying to make a sub with Dylan Schwagerus, but he hasn't been allowed on yet because USD is in possession. Steaming through the middle. Steaming through the middle indeed. Oh, they've knocked it on. That's, that's unfortunate. They had a great platform there. You can, pro you can probably pick up on the mic just a little bit of frustration on the sidelines. This is a big scrum here. I mean, with, what, 50 seconds left in the game, Aztecs have to secure possession. They don't have to go and get a score, but they need to secure possession, work the ball probably side to side a couple of times, and then feel free to pump it into touch. Uh, but it all starts with this scrum. So competitive scrums and sevens when it literally is three on three. It is a real genuine pushing contest as SDSU get the ball into their side. You have got to try and put it down the middle, though, which I think the referee is going to have a word with both sets of front row. SDSU, the Aztecs. Of course, their normal home, or certainly their football team plays in Snapdragon Stadium, just up from the 805 here in Chula Vista, as now they try and get away on this far, or should I say near side, Alberts, who's been strong all day when he's had the ball, pumping his legs. They need to recognize here, just put the ball into touch. The game is theirs. Don't, hey. ru don't run into touch. You're not allowed to, but just put it into touch. I think they want more than that. They want to finish high. They do kick it. They are still going to play with the ball, though, Jeremy. Yes, they are only leading by two points, but maybe they want to have another try. Well, They're still going after it. I'm suggesting that's a really bad idea. But now they have a penalty, so hopefully they tap and put a touch. But no, once again, they don't listen to me and try and run it one more time. Well, hopefully at least it's entertaining for people at home as Alberts decides to do it all himself. Lovely left-hand pass out wide, and that will finish the day. Ronan Green in the corner. Which is why, Will, I said don't put the ball to touch because you want to score in the far right-hand side. <laughs> Congratulations to the Aztecs. The crystal ball.
or Jeremy Ogle coming in <laughs> little handy at the end. <laughs> little dusty. <laughs> little dusty indeed. But what a great finish, Will. What a great finish. Again, long day and just still have the legs and the energy to, to put one in the corner. I'm really happy for those guys. A fantastic day. Finished off with the last try from SDSU. Ronan Green getting over. There will be this conversion attempt. If he gets it, I'll buy him 10 pints. Well, actually, Ryan Matias is standing with us now, so he will take those 10 pints if he gets it. And I will ask him for 10 bags of spinach. Luckily, he didn't get it, so Ryan, the drinks are on Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Great work from SDSU. Ryan Marius' men win this final game of day one of the West Coast Sevens here in Chula Vista. As we see this final bit of action, Alberts who's been tremendous all day carrying through the middle, but in the end, it wasn't his carrying. It was that left-hand pass that just opened up. Ronan Green finishing off in this corner, finishing off this last game here of the West Coast Sevens. Day one, 17 points to 12. SDSU beat USD twos. And I guess to finish off, Jeremy, this has been full on today, but I am really, really impressed by some of the standards, some of the work rate, particularly of all the Southern Californian side and even the Texas side in El Paso today. Uh, echo that 100%. Been a great day of rugby. Again, beautiful location, great performances, teams that are, you know, playing at the top of their game, teams that are developing, and that that's what builds for tomorrow. And what I'd like to say before we close is I just want to thank you, Will. I want to thank you, Ian, for your participation. It was great partnering with you today. I also want to thank everyone at West Coast Sevens. They, they put on a magical show. So Warren Speaker and all his guys, th thanks for that. TVX Video and their significant crew, they, they did amazing work today. So love working with those guys. So um, it's been a spectacular day. And now there's no more rugby standing between me and the uh, Dirty Martini that Ian promised us. Now, where you've, you've suddenly put the guns away just when you came back on. The guns will be out tomorrow for the big day. That's the big one. We've seen these guys compete today, but tomorrow we're going to get to see the top teams really go at it, and that's what I'm looking forward to. So hopefully everyone tunes in tomorrow, and yeah, I'll get you a dirty martini tomorrow. No, that's what we like to hear. Yeah, we've been here on the Rugby Network all day, and of course tomorrow we'll be back on the Rugby Network and Cox TV as well. So I guess we're signing off here, gents, at Chula Vista for day one of the West Coast Sevens. Appreciate all everyone's work. It's some really good rugby, both collegiate and high school. Any last words? Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Yeah, 9 a.m. sharp, San Diego State seconds against USC. Look forward to it. Look forward to another morning with you guys. There you go. There's Ch the schedule there. 9 a.m. That is Pacific Coast time, 12 p.m. If you are on that East Coast and we have wrapped it up, I think we all deserve to get to the beer tent. Absolutely. Have a great night, guys. Cheers.